Welcome to episode 257 of In Touch with iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg, and we are recording the show a little later next the following day on a Friday in the afternoon. That's because we had to have Patrice Brennamore come back on the show. Hi, Patrice. So glad you're back. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, you can blame me for that. That's, no. that's totally fine. I'll take it. No, you I'm were- doing good. Uh, been been an interesting week. and Yeah. 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 We had a public holiday on, well, yesterday and Thursday. So that was nice. And I got today off like you did. So that's yes. also cool. Yeah. Yes. It's been, what is that? It's been like I haven't even made it past Tuesday in the videos. So <laughs> that's so, how well it's going. You've got a long way to go. Uh, mm-hmm. So glad you're here. And uh, Jeff, ba- Jeff Gamut is back. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing all right. And uh, e- even though we just, not that long ago, all of us got to spend some time together. Yeah. I'm super happy to to be here with everyone. I am so thrilled to have all of you here, including Ben Rathick. How are you doing, Ben? I am great and just happy to be here, Dave. I almost yeah. said Jeff after the Mac, after the Mac <laughs> show today. <laughs> Can yeah. you do that, Dave? Can you <laughs> open the pod bay door? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I don't do that. I Dave. was just thinking of that. <laughs> um, so, yes, WWDC 2023. Wow. It was quite a, quite an event and two and a half hours worth of, uh, of a keynote, lots of things, uh, because there's so much things to, to talk about, we're probably going to keep it uh, streamlined here to focus on one topic, see where we go here. You know, everybody's really buzzing about, uh, the, uh, Apple's vision pro, uh, uh glasses headset. Um, uh, but, uh, that's a that's a future product. I know everybody's going to be excited about that, but we talk about iOS here all the time. So why don't we just uh, talk about iOS and see what it was released uh, with that? And a number of us here have uh, are already running beta on it, and uh, we mm. can get some uh, get some ideas. But I'd like to just hit some of the uh, some of the topics yeah. on that. I mean, it's in touch with iOS, so why? Yes. Like, we should talk about it. Right? Yes, we yeah, should. that's on brand. <laughs> exactly. I kept the right on brand this week, so so we'll. we'll <laughs> We'll hit the topics. Don't worry. You'll be hearing lots more. We got a number of months with beta testing going on and all that fun stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So, um, so yes, iOS 17 was, re- was re- announced. It was released, uh, uh, to, to, to beta testers, developers, um, uh, for right now. Uh, so you've got, uh, that to, to be looking at and, uh, um, yeah, there was just uh, just an incredible amount of features that that were 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 added to iOS, which I was very happy to see because it's been a long time coming uh, uh, with that when, when it comes to that stuff. So, but um, some of the things that I wanted, I think the top three that were really talked about. Um, the first one is the they hit the, the the primary the primary applications, which would be the phone, the messages, and FaceTime. <laughs> they added yeah. three new and pretty incredible features. Um, so, the first thing I'll talk about is the phone. You can personalize your phone calls now. So I don't know if you've tried that yet, Patrice, on your iPhone, but uh, it's it's pretty cool that you can actually put like a, a personalized uh, uh, wallpaper of that person and mm-hmm. have really cool change of fonts yeah. with names and all that stuff. What what what, uh, what was uh, what did you like so far? I, I haven't had played that with. I have not played with that I, yet, but I, I've played with it. It's I mean it's beta. It's pretty buggy. Yeah, um, I figured it, it looks yeah. really beautiful, but it's really buggy. Uh, I mean, when is the last time we got any updates to the to the phone app actually on our iPhones? I can't uh, it's remember. Been a while. If, if 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 ever. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that maybe maybe yeah. they changed the buttons from like whatever round to rectangular or vice versa. Like that was probably the last big change. Um, no, but it's really really cool. I mean the the like that you can see like those um, yeah those wallpapers basically the on the phone calls and. Um, that you also like, I think, um, live voicemail is really cool. Actually, I got to That's, see it kind of already. I, I did. Um, That's what I'm going to share. Um, I got, I did, cool. I did, did play with it because I have actually mm-hmm. happened to have a, a second line sitting in this camera that says an iPhone 10 R, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, I could actually do it for full out demo. I had to try it, so I did. So, um, I made the phone call, I, I let it go to voicemail. And uh, mm-hmm. I started talking, and oh my god, it was coming up on the screen. All you had to do is you had yeah. to tap the the little uh, voice uh, mail button on the top left on the screen, uh, mm-hmm. and, it, and it brings it right up, like like it shows. Uh, uh, we've got links, of course, of all this in the show notes. It was like it shows the picture of that, and 
it goes through the, uh, the talking and then you can either accept it or just mm-hmm. let let it go and finish the, the voicemail yeah uh, so and it's it's right. really strange at first because you like i mean what you're used to is i don't know there's a phone call and you just don't accept it and right. that's it and then all of a sudden you see it actually accepts accepts the phone call so it's on device like it's not something that your carrier does or apple does or whatever no it's on your device mm-hmm. the phone actually accepts the call yeah. and then basically does their own uh, like voicemail system which is different mm-hmm. than i mean what how it used to be uh, which I'm very happy about because and I, I don't know if that's an indication of like more general problem. I have a feeling that 15 years in, we still don't have visual voicemail everywhere. I mean, my my carrier here doesn't have it. Oh, really? Wow. Mm. Doesn't have it. 15 years in. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that <laughs> that might be the part of the problem that the carriers just didn't want to do it or didn't care or whatever. Um, and so Apple was like, okay, fine. Like, if you don't want to do it, then we'll do it for you. Yeah. No, no that, that, that is, that's, that's weird. Cause that's been around mm. for quite a while. Um, yeah. That was so, the f- first version iPhone thing. Like, yeah, exactly. So yeah, that was it, one of the launch features. Mm-hmm. It, it was. Yeah, for sure. So it, uh, it, it, it works pretty well. I was pretty impressed mm-hmm. with how it worked here. So, uh, so good to see some enhancements there. Cause that's, that I think obviously that's a long time coming. I mean, uh, it really was. Yeah. Um, messages. There was some pretty big enhancements. So, uh, uh, what I do like is the fact that you have all your apps now in one place. That was always a, that was always an issue when it came to uh, uh, finding apps. You're always digging around <laughs> down the, down below the tray there. So, I'm not going to go through everything here, but um, the uh, checking in, letting your friend know you arrived safely. That's always that's what you always end up doing. You text text me when you get home. So now you can actually do a check in, and it actually tells you, so you don't have to do it later. Um, the, uh, the catch-ups and swipe to reply. I think that's great that you can swipe across and then do the catch-ups. Mm-hmm. Uh, big one I really am, li- I'm really liking is the search filters. Cause you, it's, I mean, especially I, I've, you've got long conversations. I have it with my family all the time, a long conversations going back and forth. And I got down to the string and like, I'm not used to it where all of a sudden we're getting message after message after message. And you want to find something we talked about. Now you can actually uh, search, uh, and uh, be able to find it much easier. Um, the other thing going along with the transcription uh, with the uh, phone, uh, with voicemail, they're also adding the audio message transcription, which I think is great. So now you don't have to play it, mm-hmm. especially if you're in a room, you can't play it. You don't want to have to uh, be yeah. playing it and listening. So um, I think they added some of that. Have you have you tried any of that? You're sitting on the subway and someone yeah. sends you an audio message and you don't have your headphones with you. Yeah, no, you yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um mm-hmm. so so it it's pretty cool uh to see that so uh mm-hmm. jeff, jeff so something like this what do you think you like the, are you gonna think it's be something you're gonna utilize with the uh with the messages oh and yeah absolutely uh i haven't started playing with it yet because i've been busy like essentially reconstituting my ipad after installing yeah. the, we're the gonna, developer beta I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna put uh, some time in and we're gonna talk about that uh, well if not there will be other other shows, yeah, of course. Um, but uh, like the the whole thing with with the check in, uh, like you said, people all the time. It's like send me a message when when you're safe home, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of people ask me to do that. I ask people to do that. When I look at this feature beyond me having uh, a more convenient way to to send that message. I'm looking at this and thinking, man, there are some people at Apple that really get how dangerous day-to-day life is for um, a big part of our population, and that mm-hmm. and that big part includes women and the LGBTQ plus community. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, also, people that are not white males. Yes. Um, and and having a way to be able to let your friends and family know that you're home safely and if you have deviated from your route where that happened so everyone has a place to as horrible as it sounds start looking yeah 
Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, I, like I, I have with my girlfriends, like we have a, like we do it on WhatsApp because they're Android users. I have to get them on iPhones now. Uh, mm-hmm. yes. yeah. Um, but like, I mean, we have a common chat, like a group chat, and like whenever we're leaving somewhere, like we're basically looking for the safely at home message. Like everybody posts it, and it's like, okay, I'm at home, or I was at home ten minutes ago, or something. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be like a hundred percent, but we get that message, and this is a way to do it kind of automatically, which I really like, and and also. Like with some ex- extra bits and pieces, where it's like, hey, if you like, if you don't arrive in time, I mean, you as the person sharing it can a- any time extend it and simply say, hey, um, whatever, something came up, mm-hmm. that's totally fine. Uh, yeah. But if it doesn't happen, if you, I don't know, can't be contacted for some reason, um, then it notifies the others, which which is super important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, the closer the closer you get notified to something happening, the more likely it is that someone can help. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Ben? On on messages, is it, is it something that uh, it's going to be of value to you? Um, being the aforementioned uh, 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 white male, um, <laughs> I'm not as likely to use it. Um, though I might use it just to placate my mom, but I mean, but, it can be anything. I mean, it yeah. can be, I don't know, you're, um, I don't know, you're meeting friends at the party and you yeah. want to let them know when you arrive at the party, so they know to look for you. Could also work yep. for that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, de- that definitely works. Yeah. But backtracking slightly to the phone, okay. uh, I noticed one one no uh god my brain doesn't work one feature because i received a call during the mac show today voicemails are now shown in line on the recent calls beneath the call they're associated to. oh nice i didn't even yeah. oh okay that's cool that is cool yeah, that makes a lot of sense i yeah. actually I get a lot of calls and a lot of voicemails. As crazy as it sounds, my iPhone yeah. works like a phone a lot. And and I'm jumping between my recent calls and the voicemail list all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. that's this, cool. This makes so much sense. Oh, totally. No, that's that's that that's great. Um yeah. Um by the way, also the the apps part of uh, messages. I think this is one of the things it started out one way and they're like, I think they intended there would be a couple apps and like, or a couple things there. And like the UI was fine that they had for it. And then, then they wanted to an app store and it kind of ballooned from there. They started adding more and more and more features and more apps added features and so on. And it just became like too much. So it, it's still not great to be honest. It's better than before because it's not like this little row that you scroll and hope that you find the app. Now it's mm-hmm. a big row, but it's still a row. There's no searching or anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, FaceTime. I, I think this was a really exciting feature that they added is the fact that mm-hmm. uh, you can record a video message, an audio message when you someone misses your FaceTime call. It's always like the rude message mm-hmm. that came out to this person is unavailable. And that's the end of it. <laughs> Now you actually can leave and record a video message or an audio message if they missed your call. So then you can go back and join back with them right to, in, within FaceTime instead of it uh, not being a leave message at all. Because it's just like mm-hmm. uh, calling. You know, some people, and I, I'm probably a, a culprit of that, is when I call somebody and they don't answer, I just hang up. <laughs> so I don't even leave a voicemail because yeah. usually the person is going to call me back because they see I called. So mm-hmm. um in in the case of FaceTime, it's probably the same, but this is a nice way to personalize now that you can you know give a message if you just want to get a quick you know, quick message to somebody and actually be on video, which is cool. Yes. And it's a feature that with Vision Pro makes a lot more sense. Yes, there's doing there, there that. Yes. Yeah. 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 I haven't thought of that. To be perfectly honest, I would not be surprised if the FaceTime app and the phone app were to merge in the very near future. You kind of have already, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, I mean, they have on the Mac, but I mean, even on the phone app on the iPhone, you can start FaceTime calls from there and stuff. Oh so, yeah. 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 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, what I also like is the like the the reaction. So as I said before, yeah, if I did they, this or yeah. this, like mm-hmm. it, it would actually do it, and it, and it would actually work in or supposed to work in in Zoom and like not just in FaceTime. So that's gonna be really cool. Yeah. You no, can that, like give it a thumbs hands. up and yeah, give a thumbs up and it actually does something. Yeah, like hearts, confetti, fireworks, all kinds mm-hmm. of fun balloons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to be kind of fun. Uh, the other thing too that is exciting, and we'll we'll talk about audio and home, you know, the, the later mm-hmm. episode. But uh, FaceTime is now going to be on your Apple TV, which I'm pretty stoked about. Uh, being able to mm-hmm. start the call directly from your FaceTime app on the Apple TV, and then hand it off uh, from your phone to your TV. Yeah. Remember, like twenty years ago, maybe. Uh, or 15 mm-hmm. when we had TVs with with like webcams in them, maybe 10, mm-hmm. 10 yeah. to 15, mm-hmm. 20 sounds a lot. Uh, and, and like you could do Skype calls and stuff. I think there was an episode of, there was definitely an episode of um, Scrubs where they did that. Mm-hmm. And now we're getting back to that. So that's quite yeah. nice. Yeah. So yeah, now that the technology is mature. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean I the, the, the the camera, the, like the camera on your phone or your iPad, is way better than any webcam. Yes, oh, for sure, and it's mature. But um, I think more than that, actually, is the fact that we became more comfortable. We as as a, as a society became more comfortable with remote video chats mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. once the pandemic lockdown started. So. The idea of sitting on your couch and having a conversation, video conversation mm-hmm. with someone, I think is much more acceptable than it used to be. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, just, I mean, I can see it. Like you're sitting with your family. I don't know if, or like, I don't know, one, like one part of the family is in another part of the country and you're just sitting on your respective couches and just like have a beautiful big screen in front of you and, and the, the phone and the Apple TV and, or the iPad. And that's it. Mm-hmm. You don't need to fiddle with a Mac or like hold the phone or put the iPad somewhere where everybody can see it. And we have like seven people in the room and it's kind of not working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard to miss grandma on the, on the 50 inch TV. Yes. And it's also yeah right. qu- quite hard for grandma to be missed on the fifteen inch fifty inch TV with an iPhone in front of it because the the angle is so wide that you you're gonna catch them. And with uh, what's called stage, is that called stage light? No, that's different. No, not stage manager. Uh, not uh, not continuity. Center stage. Center, center stage. stage. There yeah, we with go. center stage, it zooms in and stuff, so you don't have to right. deal with that at all. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So let's uh let's uh talk a little bit about things that weren't talked about before I I'm, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. want to go through the whole list. Do you anybody can mm-hmm. go to the iOS preview here? I thought it'd be some fun things to talk about here in relates to what was not mentioned on stage. Um and you're right, Patrice. This is all you're, we're starting to see a trend here that, that some of the things that they've already added to iOS 17, which kind of excites me, is gonna have to kind of, kind of work in conjunction with the the, the Apple's mm-hmm. Vision Pro headset uh, um with with the AR. Uh, on this. Um, so one of the things that they did actually, uh, there was a, there was a photo here is, is the fact that if you have a food item as an image, you can actually tap that image and it'll search for similar recipes, which is kind of, mm-hmm. which kind of neat. Um, so they, they, they did enhance that. Uh, the other thing too, is, um, the image cutoff feature, which I thought was great when they brought that in on mm-hmm. iOS 16. So you can just, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. You can just tap yeah. an image of somebody and put it right mm-hmm. into your message. And then, and that, yeah. that's like a picture of you or you're somebody and then do yeah. that. You use um, it as a sticker, really. Oh, yeah, or really a sticker. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, this update mm-hmm. now they're going to allow you to look up these objects to find out more information mm-hmm. about them. So, so this case, like a cat, you could you could actually find out more about that cat or or similar breed, like 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 Leo for for Ben here. So, <laughs> speaking of, who looks so, almost exactly like that cat? Yeah. Uh, speaking <laughs> of uh, f- of the Photos app, you're now going to be able to recognize your pets and cats and dogs and all that stuff and mm-hmm. puts it in the people section, which I find that to be pretty cool. So now you're going to have uh, looking up all your all the people. Um, it's going to actually uh, show your pets as uh, as as a person. <laughs> so mm-hmm. um, so so they did do some uh, enhancements with the free form update. You know, I remember Jeff and I when we were, we started testing that when when I when it first came out on the iPad. Uh, but yeah, they're going to be add some other cool things like water brushing colors, calligraphy pen, highlighter, 
all that stuff is going to be a really, really a cool thing. And, and, and doing real time collaboration. It's the other thing that Freeform is going to add as well. Um, very similar to what I experienced using Microsoft 365 when you're doing real time collaboration on, on a Word document or, um, or an Excel spreadsheet. Um, this will go to actual drawing what you're doing. I mean, there are other apps out there to do this, but this is great to see what's going to be on an iPhone and uh, probably and an iPad as well. Um, the nudity filter, I thought they, 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 I believe they did mention some what of that, but uh-huh. this is going to be uh, definitely a nice thing for, especially for parents, if something comes up and it's going to warn this could Not be just sensitive for, for anybody. Yeah. You don't want yeah, to be I mean, at... really for anybody, a lot of women like getting women. unsolicited ones, but yeah. I mean, any, I mean, like, I want to say something, I'm not going to anybody. say it, but yes. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I mean, but I even like for you, maybe you're in a work context and you just yeah. don't like, you might have people that send you stuff like that and you're usually fine with it. But in that situation, you like, because you're at work, you just don't want to see that yeah. mm-hmm. or others to see it maybe. Um, and, and that also makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, good, and it good. works. I mean, it, it works across the system. That's really cool. Like it's not yeah. just in messages or whatever. Like it's right. a, it's anywhere where there's photos coming in. No, that's that's great because there there are some unfortunate, inappropriate people out there that do yeah. those kind mm-hmm. of things. Um, and the tidbit uh, developers can use that. So this is there's an API or some some sort of kit behind it that uh, developers great. can also implement in their apps. That's great. So it's not just Apple. It's going to be any, any mm-hmm. developer. Um, do you have, did you have, did you want to add something, uh, Jeff? Um, th- to me, this ties back into my whole idea that there are women that are part of the developer process now in, mm-hmm. in a significant way, because mm-hmm. my first thought when I saw this was, yeah, there's a woman that's, that's mm-hmm. really tired of having those unsolicited picks show up yep. on, on her iPhone and is in a position to do something about it for herself and her friends and and everyone else. Or has kids. Or like has that's kids. That's the other option. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's a lot, a lot also to, like, I mean, I know that's a trope. Oh, we want to protect kids. But I think in this case, they, they have some truth to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, these last couple of features kind of dispel this uh, notion that Apple did not have any AI in the keynote. They had a lot of it. They just called it machine learning. Machine learning, yeah. right? And right. did not and, and did not focus on an incomplete chatbot. It was actually more than machine learning. There's like if you if you watch also the State of the Union, for example, and some of the sessions, there's a lot of AI terms that are flying around sure. um, that like not necessarily would like people would recognize. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like Apple doesn't yeah. do hypes. No. Um. This other feature in mail, I think is great in the mail app that you're, mm-hmm. uh, it'll have now support for auto filling one time verification codes. Oh my gosh. What something. Hallelujah. That, that they add to this because <laughs> what a pain. Yeah. I, I just did it. I just, just did it yeah. earlier today. I was like, I, I copy it and you can't paste it and, mm-hmm. and, and they got to type it in manually. So this is huge. And then the other thing too, which I and, thought was very, int- oh, go ahead. Yeah. Patrice, I'll let you go. Yeah, and the, and uh, you can, there's an option to delete the message after both in messages and in mail. Like you don't have yeah. to. But right. you can. No, oh, yeah, I was, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say that because now you can enable. I missed autom- seeing that. Oh, yeah, this is all yeah. stuff that wasn't mentioned. You, you mm-hmm. can you can uh, enable automatic deletion of these emails mm-hmm. and messages that include verification codes. So we're always going through yeah. and clearing out our vo- and messages, mm-hmm. cleaning out those mm-hmm. those notifications. So now this is going to automatically. You can just turn it on and uh, and and clean up automatically is where it says on here too. So yeah. Um, so of course they're going to add more wallpapers. So we always expect that. I don't need to really talk too much about that. It'll be fun. Um, Apple did introduce a shared play playlist feature in the, for Apple Music that you can build mm-hmm. a list with your friends. That's kind of fun, and that's you presumably yeah. can do that. Pronouns too. field. You, you missed. Oh, that I'm one. sorry. Oh, yeah, I missed that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, yes. You now have a pronouns field in your contacts. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I'm just whizzing through these things so yeah. quickly here. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, so many. <laughs> yeah. So no, that that that's great. That I'm glad that they 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 did that. So mm-hmm. the, um um so. Uh, the other thing too, is you're, they're, they're, they're going to be add some enhancements in the news, news plus app. Um, but, but also music, they're going to have a cross fade option, um, mm-hmm. 
that you, allows you to crossfade to now playing bar the, within the app. The, the, the shared playlist is really interesting um, yeah. because it's something people have been asking for for a while that like friends can collaborate on a playlist. And uh, what's more interesting, they inter integrated that into CarPlay. So if you're in a car uh, and the, the driver's phone is connected to CarPlay, um, you can basically, I don't know exactly how it's going to work and how it's going to be secured and not everybody can do it, um, right. but uh, you can basically somehow get invited or added to the, the list and then like your, like whatever, your, your kids or whatever can decide what to play and play the same song 10 times if they want to. <laughs> yeah. I I bet it's going to work much like it does on Apple TV where um, you get uh, an on-screen code that the person mm. has to enter on their device. Yeah, probably yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the sharing uh, playlist feature, um, they should call it the Spotify feature because <laughs> uh, seriously, yeah. this is yeah. the the Spotify feature that I have heard many people say keeps them on Spotify. But, I mean, you could share playlists before. You couldn't yeah, but just not couldn't like collaborate this. on the, yeah, the collaborative like together. part. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. yes, I, and so I have to tell you, it'll change. One of my one of my favorite features on, on Apple Music is the Friends playlist. Yeah. It's really cool. Yes. So my uh minor uh side rant to that. What what broke in the last two weeks <laughs> that that I can't tell my home pod to play my friends playlist? It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> that that um. damn it, HomePod. <laughs> yeah, so frustrating. Anyhow, okay. Yeah, I like I'm, that. I'm I like that the, the, the shared playlist. I mean, I, I mean, we're 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 friends in, in the music app, and I like to see what you like to listen to, and, and vice versa. When I have a playlist, so yeah, I think it's fun to to do that and to listen to what people are into with the music. Yeah. Um, the uh, the News Plus uh, uh, app, it, it's, the subscribers will now get a crossword and mini crossword puzzles. Uh, are we sure like mm -hmm. in the New York Times? I doubt it, but, <laughs> but interesting to see that they've added some enhancements in the News Plus. Um, you also are going to be able to listen to, uh, to the audio stories for, uh, through the Apple Podcast app right from uh, uh, from there as well. Uh, memojis are so important too. And they got three oh, yes. new memojis. I, I I don't know if you've looked at them yet, but uh, Patrice, no, it's <laughs> Halo, Halo, Smirk, and Peekaboo. <laughs> um, I have to check them out right away. Yeah, we'll have to, have to see that. <laughs> um, the Reminders app, I think this is really cool because this is going to Sherlock like a lot of these grocery list apps um, that uh, mm -hmm. now you have a gro new grocery list that will automatically categorize items for you. Uh, for shopping right from in the reminders app, which is, which is great. Yeah. This is probably the feature that will get me to use reminders. I'll use it only for the grocery list. Right. Right. But every grocery list app that I have tried using the barrier to entry for me is far higher than I want. You know, like I don't want to, I don't want to have to spend an afternoon entering all of these different items and doing all the categorizing and stuff that you typically have to do. Just let me, as as I'm thinking of my list, just start adding the things, and it does the rest of it for me, and uh, and it's simple and it's clean. There we go. Yeah, yeah, no, no I, I, that's what I like, and then uh, it definitely looks very simple. Um, this app will also let you change groups and view items in a column, kind of like in a Kanban style format, um, and uh, that would make uh, make makes it a little more clean efficient um mm -hmm. other thing that was great that they announced was the the fact that the find my now you have item sharing of the find my specifically air tag um because yeah. uh, you're in your you're in your mom's car and she has an air tag and on the keychain and then you're like you have a rogue uh, air tag what are you gonna do and why you know you should share especially i think that comes yeah. in handy sharing with family members spouse or whatever so, yeah. so the, that's up to five people you could do it too yeah. So I mean, some yeah. people like they're they're sitting in the same car for like right. a exactly. like bigger road trip, and then all of a sudden you get notifications. Hey, there's an air tag with you, and we're like, yeah, no, it's on my Me. partner's <laughs> key or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I have a Hyundai, which yeah. everybody should know the problems that have gone on with them in the last mm -hmm. year. Kia, too. yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they're, they're the same company. I have a air tag hidden inside the vehicle. I mean, just in case it gets it gets mm-hmm. stolen because it's one of those earlier ones yeah. that they're not going to fix. It's a joke. So mm-hmm. the one feature I have wanted for like a couple of months now is to be able to share the air tag location with my parents. Be for one, if uh it was ever stolen, and two, if something were to say happen to me, they know right where my vehicle is. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Makes sense. Um the uh uh, you know, uh, the PDF autofill feature was on the iPad and that's part of I, I, iPad OS uh, 17. That's also coming to, to iOS as well, which is a welcome thing. Cause sometimes you want to look at a P- PDF form and want to be able to <laughs> autofill it right from your iPhone. Um, mm-hmm. those of us who have the iPhone 14 pro max, that's always the biggest screen to have, do it on. But if you've got a smaller screen, that might be a little bit challenged with PDFs, but yeah, but you still be able to do it. Um, so Good, good way of saving the contact fields and saving the information right from the device. Um, and, the, and the notes app will also allow you to view and mark up PDFs, which I think is great. The notes app in itself, I think is getting some huge mm-hmm. uh, 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 upgrades here. So this one here, I, I don't understand why we've never had this until now is the multiple yeah. timers. Why, how we've not all this time, we've had the timer, the, the timer on <laughs> iPhone and iPad. We've never been able to do multiple timers until iOS 17. <laughs> Did, did you catch the little thing that Phil said about that? He's like, we we live. I think he said something like along the lines of, "Oh, we live in exciting times." Like, yes, like yeah. amazing times <laughs> or something. Yeah, something like that. That. yeah. <laughs> like he didn't want to say finally. <laughs> so no, said, because you know he doesn't want the uh, 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 <laughs> because he, everything we were all he says it. is pre-approved and part yeah. of the script. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, see, for sure. yeah, see what they should have done is bring in uh, the Rock for this announcement. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> At last, multiple timers have come to iOS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. So there, there you go. You got multiple timers now, uh, and um, they did uh, enhance the widgets now, having interactive widgets on both iPad and iPhone on iOS, and as well as iPad OS. So that will help you control music or mark a task done without having to open up an app right from a, you know, right from the widget. Um, health app, they, they're bringing the health app to iPad. So we'll just kind of, kind of mention that here as well as in iOS 17, we'll be able to provide you a summary of your friend's workout achievements, like streaks and awards. So you'll actually get a summary right from the health app, which is kind of cool. Um, you will be able to create custom plans for meditation and workouts under Apple Fitness Plus. That's something that uh, produce something was uh, enhanced. Looks like for for that, which mm-hmm. can be which can be great. Um, yeah, at- it's, I mean the health the health features in iPad OS in general are are quite nice. Like I'm I'm very happy, and I'm I mean I I have a small group of people that I share like fitness stuff with, and I'm very happy about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Apple Apple will allow you to sign into your iPhone using a nearby device or a phone number uh, or email ID listed under your account. So that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. You don't have to put your your Apple ID. Uh, and, and nothing like people who never remember their Apple IDs. I don't get that ever because uh, I lost my phone. Do you know? Do you know? Did you use Find My? Did Did you? Yeah. Do you know your Apple ID? No. No, <laughs> I mean I I know my Apple ID, but it's still like a hassle to like. It, 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 it but still it. hassle. I I just bring that up yeah. as part of the as as a as a pile on to a, a hassle as it is. Mm-hmm. So so this is going to give a little bit easier a way to do this. I like this. The spotlight search will now allow you to toggle system settings like Wi-Fi directly from the search screen. Because always you always had to go into settings, kind of dig to get to the Wi-Fi mm-hmm. and then turn it on or off. And it actually is going to show up in a Siri suggestion um, that, uh, yeah. that, 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 that does the search screen here. So um, so that's kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Or go to control center and do it there. Yeah. Yeah. Th- this kind of goes <laughs> with the multiple timers in the why has this not been done before category <laughs> yes. right yes a couple of non so important things but uh, interesting the airpods you know the airpods always whenever they pop up on the screen they're always white and if you <laughs> like, if you if you're in dark mode 
it's like, whoa. <laughs> so now it'll, it'll, it'll also be in dark mode. What a concept. And then the uh, the new mute unmute action that you can trigger by holding the stem in on, on mm-hmm. iOS 17. They'll add that. And um, it's configurable. So that's something mm-hmm. you can, I think the, the mute, one of them you can change, but the other one you can. I right. don't remember which way. And then even though most of us here use carrot weather, this isn't important for weather. Uh, yeah, okay. They added the previous day's weather. Okay. Is mm. that how important that is? That's cool. It's, yeah, I guess it's uh, nice. Depending uh, on where you are, it can actually be really important at times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I mean, if you're, I don't know, if you're, if you're a farmer, for example, it might be interesting to say, oh, did it rain yesterday? <laughs> like, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Like, can I harvest today? Did it rain yesterday? Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. How, how about are the roads today in the mm-hmm. winter? Did oh, yeah. did it snow a lot yesterday? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I'm in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um let's talk a little bit about CarPlay. They did they didn't talk anything about it at all, but there is there is there is some enhancements that are that are happening. I think this is this is great. Um the uh one of it is EV sh- charging support and share play mm-hmm. coming to, to 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 CarPlay, which is interesting. Um, on Apple maps, you'll actually get real time EV charging station data. So that mm-hmm. for those who have EVs, so that's, I think that's going to be, uh, uh, pretty great that, that you'll have that right there. Um, also a case of finally. Yeah. Oh, exactly. right. Finally. <laughs> I mean, finally. like, uh, like uh, others have had that five years ago or so for me longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then um, SharePlay is coming to CarPlay, which, uh, you know, mm-hmm. so you can actually do with music. Of course, this is going to be audio only, not video. Um, that uh, you want, the which person's going to control the music by putting it through the speakers. And then you have drivers who have to concentrate on the road. They can mm-hmm. really go through mm-hmm. it now. SharePlay will be in, connected to, to CarPlay. So now that person that's sitting in the passenger seat or the back seat can, yeah. um, can control <laughs> sound. I think that's good. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to hand your unlocked unlocked iPhone to like your mm-hmm. passenger anymore. Yeah, that too. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. good point. <laughs> yeah, that too. So, um, and then you know, of course, there's as they announced last year in 2022 that uh, CarPlay was going to go in a significant overhaul in the future. Well, mm-hmm. that transition is still a little bit of ways off because you got to get vehicles that are that are going to buy into <coughs> not G, not GM yep. that that is going to have. A, <laughs> That's yeah. going to have a full, full immersed uh, s- screen uh, in a vehicle. Mm-hmm. I, I'm looking forward to that. I like to see where that goes. Um, I think so, they yeah. said last year it would be default this year, but I'm sure not. Yeah. So I, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'd be curious to see where that goes and and where it, uh, uh, where it has a uh, where it has it <laughs> in place here. So uh, it's a. Uh, um, definitely, we're going to be add more stuff here with uh, with these new things. I, I, it's it's just. It's endless, and, we're, and you know, developers are already going to discover, you know, where where things are when it comes to mm-hmm. uh, where where it comes to that. So, um, uh, other things that were that were talked about during uh, the, that were in the in the keynote uh, standby. I thought that was an interesting thing that that you actually and I, and I actually want that stand that they had that that's, mm-hmm. that's in the demo. They, they haven't talked about right. what that is yet. Someone. But, Someone on Mastodon, maybe it was Kelly uh, Gumond, posted mm-hmm. exactly what the standard is. You can buy it. Like this is a commercially available from a third party. Like it's okay. Uh, if you don't don't know what standby is, it allows you to put your iPhone on its side, charging and uh, on, on using the MagSafe connector, and it basically becomes the same nightstand mode that the Apple Watch has. So, mm-hmm. but nightstand, it's even more hand- desk. Whatever, desk mode, whatever widgets. you want to call it. Yeah. It's like a widget. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but there are some really good looking uh, things it shows. It'll show the time and show if you're playing music, it, it uh, mm-hmm. goes through a, a picture library uh, on your iPhone, yeah. brings up a calendar. So I think there's going to be some new full screen experience. This is uh yeah. Mark something. my words. Maybe this year, I guess this year we will see a home pod with a display with like kind of an yeah. iPad or something built in or an iPhone built in or whatever it is. And this is how it's going to look like. Yeah, 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 or a or an iPad Mini with uh, some kind of MagSafe on it could also be yeah. Mm-hmm. I I can see that. I mean, now, now we've got the, the the Vision Pro. They're really going to be looking mm-hmm. at enhancing some of the other products. Um, 
the uh, airdrop uh, swapping numbers that was you know that was a long time coming honestly mm-hmm. <laughs> i mean I, I don't know why why it took this long to get that um so i it, filed that as a feedback a couple of years ago i said you? like it i it, because like coming from there must must have been pre pandemic um because yeah conferences um like probably after dc 2019 i said like that like would be really helpful if there was a way i said in the wallet app so this is way better mm-hmm. um you could exchange your like your business card basically right and this right. is it so this is the patrice feature yeah i, I don't know maybe yes. someone else had the I same thought, idea you know like yeah they, they, they listen to you that's what happened mm-hmm. yeah. let's go um, with yeah. this the patrice feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but i get my game porting kit patrice gets her her uh her business cards yeah now that i don't need them anymore yeah <laughs> of course, if I didn't mention, that's called name drop. So it was for someone. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. So you're, you're you're transferring your name. So, uh, so also with airdrop that you are now going to be able to initiate uh, airdrop by by being close to somebody. But now you can step away, and and and, and later this year they're going to actually have it so it, it finishes over the transfer over the internet. Which mm-hmm. I think that's kind of cool. That uh, this is so smart. Yeah. I mean, I. I have air, done airdrop with a lot of people, like I'm at at some event, and I have photos they need. They should have the the full resolution versions. Don't text them because they get compressed. So you yeah. airdrop, and then so, I have to walk yeah. them through being able to accept airdrop images from me. Mm-hmm. And then you have to wait for them to finish. You know. Mm-hmm. So so Jeff, what you're saying is you're the person who sends like unsolicited images on airplanes. Uh, mine are always <laughs> solicited. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, although, but that's a good feature. Yeah. Um, y- <laughs> yes. Too funny. Um, let's talk a little bit about support. iOS 16, iOS 16, iOS 17 is going to mm-hmm. be, uh, at the end of the line is the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10. So, and then it was due. I mean, both of those, those iPhones are, what is it, six to eight years old at this point. Mm-hmm. So, um, maybe yeah. the, the 10 might be a little newer, but, um, so it starts at the 10 S the 10 S max and the 10 R, which is great. They, they kept that phone yeah. in place and then going on up to the current models. So, uh, so that's, that, uh, important. That means other than the S E, there is no phone with an, with a home button anymore. A home button anymore. The, right. Right. That, that you have to no support. Need. Yeah, the SE is is I think the new SE is the only one. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, so that's good for developers. Like we can finally oh, for sure. phase out all of that old, mm-hmm. like oh, the old but interface they can't sizes on the iPad and so on. yet. No, not on the iPad, but um, I mean on the phone. Like it's it's not just a home uh, the home button. It's also like the the inter like the screen sizes and everything. Oh right, yep, that. yep. So, very slowly, it's gonna take a couple of years still, but very slowly we can do that. Yeah. So it looks like we did pace this well. At least I paced Uh this well for iOS. So we we have a little bit extra time here to talk about uh, iPad OS. And I think I want to get the first thing I want to talk about is Jeff's experience with upgrading to on his uh, non critical Mm -hmm. iPad, iPad, Mm -hmm. um, what you experienced with that. If you can uh, give us, share us your insights. All right. Well, let me, let me start this off by saying I am not complaining at all. I understand what what beta really means for software, and I understand that developer beta one oftentimes is is uh, almost synonymous with uh, with late alpha. Um. So anyhow, what happened was uh, um, I did the uh, the OS update from from iOS sixteen to developer beta one. Uh, iPad OS 17 and the process went super smooth, no problems. My iPad boots back up and my home screen is almost completely empty. Yikes. There, there are. And so w- what I'm seeing are a, a small handful of the apps that are pre-installed or just part of the, the core installation. Mm-hmm. Those happen to be the apps that were on my my home screen. As I start flipping through multiple screens, um, I start finding the other uh, core install apps where on whatever screen I had them, if they were in a folder, that folder's still there. 
Hmm. And, um, and so it's like, okay, that's kind of weird. And um, then I discovered that my secure enclave had been wiped. So I had to redo touch ID. And mm-hmm. that process was really janky. Um, hmm. So what I did when, when I went to the touch ID thing, I did what I've done many times before on devices where, where, um, Touch ID is just turned off for logging in. I just tap the little button to to turn turn it back on for for when you're logging into your device. At which point it starts the uh, the scanning process for your fingerprint, and at the end of the process, then you're just done and and it's set up, which is a smart way to do it because you don't have to think about do I need to set all this up first and then go turn the feature on. It just knows what you want to do. The problem was when I did it that way, it would get through the first round of of fingerprint scanning and uh, and tell me it was done. And so then when I tap continue, it's just over and uh, and there's no fingerprint set up. So what I had to do was start by adding a fingerprint, setting it up, and once it was set up, then I could turn on unlock with with fingerprint. Um, so weird bug and, and having all of my third party apps also including Apple apps that, that are not installed by default, all of that stuff just disappearing and having to, to reinstall stuff. Um, yeah, this, this is why I installed this on an, on a non critical device so that if something Mm -hmm. went wrong, I wouldn't be screwed and it went wrong, um, to a degree. I'm not screwed. And uh, at the same time, I know there's a lot of people that were able to get through the whole upgrade process without any incident at all. Mm-hmm. This is a beta. Yes. Stuff like this ha- can happen. It's just a beta. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But well. it, it's running fine on, it's on my uh, 10.5 inch iPad pro. Uh, yeah. Totally running fine. Yep. And, um, uh, and I'm getting apps that I want to uh, to try out and test reinstalled. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a surprise to see all this stuff <laughs> just nuked. Yeah, I I yeah. installed it on the iPad uh, 2018, the 12.9 inch uh, iPad, and it actually went installed uh, fine. So it mm-hmm. just seems like this is an unfortunate uh, experience for you. Yeah, which I think is also the last version that ipad will get as far i'm as pretty sure that yeah for yeah. the 10 and a half inch ipad uh ipad os 17 is the end of the mm. line for it yeah. yeah yeah for me it worked worked just fine i mean i also do the same thing i install it in the ipad first because if it breaks then i'm like right who cares mm-hmm. um but uh yeah i mean there's for sure bugs and stuff but overall it's working fine yeah yeah so we've got a little bit of time here. Let's talk a little bit about iPad. The iPad wasn't as eventful, which is kind of sad, honestly, I think, because, I mean, they did some seriously great enhancements on iOS, but on iPad OS, <laughs> okay, yeah. they, they've, you can finally personalize your lock screen, okay? Yay, Yay. what we got on the iPhone last year. Yeah, we've had on the yeah. iPhone last yeah. year. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. And the widgets on your lock screen, okay. And the interactive widgets. And, mm. uh, the you know, all the other stuff is pretty much the same you have on your iPhone, uh, is on your iPad now as well. So, so, you know, of yeah. course they add all that same stuff in the same place. When, if you're looking at the show notes or at the link, it's the same exact stuff there as it is in, 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 in iOS. So, mm-hmm. um, but anything mm-hmm. else, not, a notable Patrice or Ben, or um, do you think is I mean, it, it, I think at this point it is very, very clear that the iPad is not going to, f- I mean, that's my, my personal view on it. The iPad is not going to survive long term. I think with the Vision Pro, it's going to get replaced because the Mac is the Mac and it does its thing. The Vision Pro kind of replaces the whole AR, VR and doing things when you're like out and about and having a big screen or whatever. So what's the iPad for? And I think Apple knew that because, I mean, for the Mm -hmm. last couple of years, they've been, I mean, they've they've updated it. It's not completely abandoned. They didn't just stop it, Mm -hmm. but they're kind of just, (laughs) for sure, iPhone is the important platform for them. And then 
everything that they do on iPhone or most things that they do on iPhone, they do on the iPad or do the iP on the iPad a year later. And that's it. There's no unique feature on the iPad really. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, that's what I say. It's with Vision Pro coming that uh, yeah. I think I kind of can agree with you. Do you guys, you guys agree with that? I hadn't thought about it, it um, from the perspective of uh, seeing Vision Pro yeah. is an indicator that iPad is uh, a short term uh, product. And when I say short term, I don't mean like it's going to disappear next year, yeah. but it's, right. it's life. Um, cycle is going to end before the iPhones mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, yeah. but Patrice, now that you're saying that, yes, I can, uh, I can see that. Um, yeah. And, and and when I said no features, it, I mean, I like, uh, that's not a hundred percent true. There were some like small improvements, like the, the flexible layout and stage manager is one. Um, and, and like some, some improvements to, like drawing and, and so on. Like there's the, the small stuff uh, and the health app for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, there's small stuff, but it's mostly catching up with, I mean, the the like the stage manager stuff, that's for Vision OS and they just added it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and the, uh, uh, or excuse me, and iPad apps will run mm -hmm. on Vision OS. Oh yeah. Oh, that's true. So, I mean, that's the biggest indicator for, okay, yeah. we're, yeah. we're basically doing that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I said not, not too eventful with the iPad. Um, as far as compatibility goes, um, you have the iPad mini fifth gen and later is compatible. The iPad sixth gen and later, the air is third gen and later. The, um, the iPad pro will be all models except the first gen 12.9 inch. So, mm -hmm. all, so all the pro models except that I just gave that old first gen to my mom. So that one's end of life. I knew that was coming. So, <laughs> <laughs> so she'll be fine learning on 16 for for it yeah. uh, and it'll still be a perfectly good device on there for for a while so um so no, no surprise there so um the airpods the airpods did get some some enhancements i thought was interesting is this is uh the adaptive audio personalized volume mm -hmm. and conversation awareness um and uh all the AirPods are going to gain some improvements as far as making calls and automatically switching. Oh my God. That's mm -hmm. been the biggest <laughs> pain and pain in my butt is, mm -hmm. is it, it, right. a, 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 a automatic switching. And then always you lift up your iPhone, you're looking at it. I'm, I have it connected to my Mac right now. I'm, you know, we're doing a podcast. I worry that it's going to disconnect me. I better be, keep it away from here. Turn it off. Mm -hmm. Now, now, mm -hmm. yeah, they're finally have come aware that, that, that that's coming. Um, but there's you know, a feature to go, go along with that. I would love to see. I'm totally interrupting. No, I apologize. Go, go. Go. Yes. Um, why can't I set a default favored device for my AirPods? Exactly. I, I want it to yeah. default to my mm -hmm. iPhone first, period. And I mean, like I'll be in the living room and I'll put my AirPods in and I hear the chime. They're connected. They connected to the Mac in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Let me yeah. set the default for, for yeah. first preference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or better yet, uh, use the GPS and the device to show you exact or yeah, to show you exactly where the device is in the house mm -hmm. and connect to the one nearest to you. Mm -hmm. That that would be okay. Well, actually, <laughs> my iPhone and my Mac are on my desk. My iPhone is technically farther away from me right now. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> technically, yeah. yeah. But yeah. still, I mean, yeah. giving me control, like based on location, based on device preference, give me some way to control what it connects to first. Mm. By the way, um. I mean, I'm I miss beta. I have betas everywhere. I have a beta of the iPhone. I have the sorry AirPod software. I don't yeah, know I was, if it installed yet, but I I activated it. So I was going to mention that that uh, yeah, yeah, you this is the first time you actually can install. Uh, put the I have this in the show, show yeah. notes too, that you can actually install the beta firmware on mm -hmm. um on it without you having to f figure out when it's going to install, but. But like you said, well, you still, still don't know that. You still don't know when it's going to <laughs> yeah. install. That's the thing, no. right? They tell you within 24 hours, like after activating it within 24 hours. That's all they tell you. Okay. And it was actually super, like that was one of the surprising things. Like there were like seven steps in like what do you have to do? 
And when I looked at it, I realized that six out of seven had already done. So the only thing I had to do was go into the developer settings on your iPhone and enable it. And that was it. Because the whole thing of setting up your phone as a developer device and with Xcode and all that, already done. Because yeah. I need that. So You know, um, Patrice, that I, I'm with you. That was pretty awesome. Interesting thing for me uh, with my iPad was that it was not giving me the t- the toggle for uh, hmm. developer, mm-hmm. and what I what I had to do to get it to show up was uh, was reconnect my iPad to my Mac, launch Xcode. Yes, that's usually what you have to do to enable it. But the thing is, this has happened multiple times. Hmm. So why was it? Why hadn't it enabled before? Hmm. Anyhow, Strange. just but. So I guess a, a better way to say it is don't forget people if you want to see the the developer toggle that you have to enable mm-hmm. you better connect your your iPad or iPhone to your Mac with Xcode running so it can uh make that start showing yeah. for you. And you need a mm-hmm. developer profile. And, and you it's need not a just developer everybody profile. can do it. Yep. Yeah. Although they did change that now you can actually have a developer account not have to pay for it and there the, there's mm-hmm. a free developer account that you can have. Yeah. Not the public, not the public beta, and uh, but you're limited mm-hmm. what you could do. But yeah, but, but for I mean, a lot of for, people, for, that's enough. Yeah. yeah, for testing betas and stuff. I mean, that's good enough. That was great, Apple. I mean, a lot help. of people sign up for. I think re- Apple realized a lot of people sign up for it and then just never use it. No, yeah. that was that was great. They opened it back yeah. up. Did you, have, did you ever? And I mean, and also a lot of it's the journalism community, so that's one less step. That's mm-hmm. true. They don't have to pay for it. Etc. Yeah, they've made it super easy, which is a good thing and a bad thing for people to be on the betas. I mean, literally, I'd introduced that with iOS 16. This year, all you had to do is go into your settings. There's this beta menu. And it was like for me set on iOS 16 beta, for example, or Mac OS, whatever, Ventura beta. And you just switch it to the to the new version. Like there's literally a new item that shows up that says iOS 17 beta, and you tap that. That, and that was that. really cool just seeing that show up. Yeah, not like before where you, I don't know, you had to restore your phone or install the, pro- I mean, later on it was at least a profile, but like it was still very hard to do that for, even for developers mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so it's good to see. I mean, Apple is really, I'm saying they, they, they were so restrictive of being able to mm-hmm. do beta. And when we, now those who all, all the years that we've paid <laughs> for having a developer account, yeah. I've never developed an app, but I still buy it. Yeah. I, had it I paid it anyway because it was important mm-hmm. to me. Uh, because mm-hmm. I wanted the developer access, I didn't want to wait on the public beta. So you know what the mm-hmm. heck. Um, but Apple had NDAs; you couldn't talk about what the beta shows. But now it's like it's <laughs> that, it's that wide open. Ignored. <laughs> yeah, everybody ignored anyway because you talk about it. And you, you know, yeah. you YouTubers will be put yeah. publishing stuff the next day after it's released. But mm-hmm. I think Apple's finally come to realize that hey, yeah, let's just let it go. <laughs> I mean, people need they to have want no control. You anyway, can't control so, it, mm-hmm. and yeah. there's no way to keep it secret. And I mean, they kept this Vision Pro secret, so they did a good job mm-hmm. with that. So, um, yes. and and we're definitely going to talk about that uh, probably next week uh, at, to at, uh, to hit, hit on that because yeah, we're getting close to time here. So, uh, mm-hmm. but it's it's good to it's good to see that that uh, that the the beta is going to be easier to access. But again, don't do it. Yeah. And we we I say that on the show every time. We just don't install beta unless you really want to be in trouble for your primary device because you're gonna, you know, you're you're gonna live on that edge and you don't want to do that. I think everybody right. here on this panel will agree with me on that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Yep. We do we do it because we know the risks and we are idiots. <laughs> yeah, but we also take or, appropriate precautions. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, I'm an idiot yeah. because I spent I keep extra money and buy and keep older devices. So mm. <laughs> yeah, I I do that even for work. I mean, when I say I'm yeah. I miss beta, I mean that I do that even for work. I mean, we have an IT department who's supposed to like check like OS releases and right. like let us know if they work, but they like, never do. That's so I do yeah. it because if 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 it breaks, I know how to handle it. Right. A lot of mm-hmm. other people in a company don't. So it's better if like if I see it early and then can inform the right people and say, hey, like let's hold that back or whatever, or inform Apple or Microsoft or whatever of an issue, um, instead of like it breaking on everybody. Yep, absolutely. So mm-hmm. 
Oh, all right. So we, we made it through an hour and, and, and everybody was worried that we were going to have enough. And we actually got to touch on some topics that we didn't expect to. Mm-hmm. So it was great. But before we go, I want to make sure I tell everybody about Max Doc. Uh, Max Doc 7 is here. Uh, tickets are still available. It's only about, gosh, I think it's like five weeks away. Is it crazy? I mean, oh my gosh. I, 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 I believe it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, yes, yeah, 42 days left until the Max Doc. So we're not as we record wow. this. So, uh, we're get we're gonna get to see our friends, including Jeff Gamut. I, I will be there speaking, of course, and Chuck Joyner, Allison Sheridan. Um, uh, check out uh, um, check out the latest uh, Road to Max Talk on Mac on, on Mac Voices. Uh, Jill McKinley was uh, was just interviewed, and she's a very interesting uh, interesting gal. So then I think so we're gonna have some really good. She's new. She's there. For, this will be a first time speaker. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll make fast friends when you come to this. Come to the conference. So it's a uh, it's July 22nd, 23rd. And, uh, you know, we were supposed to have Barry Falk on today. He does because I uh, was unable to make it, but he's also going to have the Midwest back Mac barbecue. So you can come to his house. There's all the links on there with, uh, with, uh, Mac, on uh, Mac stock, uh, conference expo.com and come join us. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and, uh, we're going to have a blast. So, uh, come check that out. So, but with that, let's go ahead and wrap up for this week. That's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, which is feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Mastodon and Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. Support the show by buying me a coffee at InTouchWithIOS.com slash coffee. We would really appreciate it. You can also become a patron of the show by going to Patreon.com slash InTouchWithIOS. You have two tiers available to support the show. We would really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe when you're no- and so you're notified when we are live streaming. Uh, usually, it's on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Today we were on Friday, just because we had to have pretty Trees on the show. We love we love having her. Uh, so uh, you can listen to fa- past streams as well as live st- uh, video streams as well as past shows. Uh, visit in touch with iOS magazine on Flipboard for many of the topics we discussed are flipped into that magazine. The link is in our show notes. You can subscribe to the show on your favorite podcatcher, including po- Pocket Casts, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, and many others. But better yet, go to our website, in touch with iOS.com, where all the ways to, to, to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me all over on the socials at DaveG65, Mastodon, Twitter, uh, you name it. I'm out there. Uh, but uh, Patrice Brandenburg, thank you so much for being here. Where can people find you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm. I'm like it was a big pleasure to be here, and yes. thank you for moving the show for me. So absolutely, could, like a good time. Yeah, you can find me on the British Tech Network with uh, these lovely faces every week, twice, once on the Mac Show on Fridays, so that's the Apple part, and with at least with Jeff and Ben also on Thursdays for the big show uh, where we talk about the non-Apple side of tech, like chip manufacturing and space and gaming and Android and Windows and like cars and you name it, like anything that is not Apple, basically. So that's a lot of fun. Um, you can find out everything I am doing, the podcast, the projects, the social media links, like literally everything on my website, thepatrice.com, because there's only one. At mm-hmm. some point, I will get patrice.com. There's someone like keeping that domain and not using it. So maybe eventually I'll get it. They got my name too. And <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's Ooh. sometimes really annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, if you're into Mastodon, and you are looking for a friendly instance, like a small one. Um, if you know me or one of like one of us, you can join our instance techhangout.social and you will get an invite from us. Just reach out and we'll provide. So this is an exclusive club. club. I'm just saying yes. you need an invite to come in. And she does a great yes. job managing it too, because uh, there was a bit of an outage and I she was like right on it and uh-huh. fixed it in a matter of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, something broke and I like fixed it right away. Yes, so uh, check it out. Mastodon's awesome. Jeff Gammon, as always, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, where can people find you? Well, as as always, thanks for letting me back on the show. Yeah. Um, it it's always lots of fun. Okay, where can people find me? Uh, social media, um, Jay Gamut on basically everything. And uh, right now I'm active on Mastodon and Instagram. Then for shows, uh, Chuck Joyner lets me on Mac Voices Live. 
Um, so I get to hang out with, with you and Ben there on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Then um, then off to Thursdays uh, on the British Tech Network, the, uh, the big show. And then typically Thursday evenings, but I guess today it's now on a Friday for today. Um, Dave lets me on in touch with iOS and then Friday mornings back to the British tech network for the Mac show. And also for the context machine, which uh, by the way, everyone Patrice is going to be doing the show with me this week. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's see what we will talk about. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah. I I can't wait to find out. (laughs) Thanks Jeff. Ben, last but not least, where can people find you? Well, you can find me on social media at Ben Rathig on your social media of choice. My website, uh, Ben, that's the old one. My (laughs) new website, Rathig.tech, where I will be having a brand new article in the next couple hours. And uh, lastly, uh, everywhere Jeff said, except for the context machine. Oh, thanks for being. This is the only way Ben and I have been able to prove that we're not actually the same person. We we have to be on shows yeah. together. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, thanks for Ben for being here. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you for listening. We got lots more WWDC coverage coming up in the, over the next few weeks. That was just a uh, just a small portion. We'll be talking a lot more in, in the weeks to follow here. But uh, until then, thanks for listening, and we'll talk again soon. 